Right, well, thank you um, to everyone. Um, one question might be, why am I talking about a project that's 10 years old? Um, so, so what is Nomisma? Very briefly, Nomisma is a controlled vocabulary and an RDF ontology for describing things, numismatic things to do with coins. And it should state that coins are actually a no-brainer for this sort of thing. They're structured, mass-produced, um, they're really excellent. Now, numismatic has been going for ages, but there's a huge number of misunderstandings, which is why I want to talk about the misunderstandings and go into a little about the, the, the story behind it all. I peer-reviewed a paper um, this year which said talks about the Numisma database. Numisma is not a database. It provides a common reference language for numismatic terms. And it's the architecture, for example, behind portals such as online coins of the Roman Empire, which we have here. And a lot of people think this is Numisma. No, Numisma makes it possible. What Numisma does, it facilitates data exchange, aggregation and queries between numismatic resources. Um, our philosophy is very simple. You bring it, we buy it, which I believe is a term commonly used in Edinburgh, I'm re reliably told. Um, if there is a concept used specifically by numismatists for which there is no suitable existing resource, then we provide a stable digital representation. It's basically uh, linked open data semantic web for numismatic dummies. And this is very much related to the history of numisma. So a bit of history. New York 2010, Andy Meadows and Sebastian Heath decide they want to put up a website re um, reproducing the index of Greek coin hoards, but they want to link it to the coins president, present in the collection of the American Numismatic Society and also to the concepts. So, for example, they can map hoards with coins produced by the mint of Sardis or, or see um, which hordes are using coins of Alexander the Great, for example, things like that. That was one idea. This is where the linked open data started. Meanwhile, in Frankfurt, in 2006, without understanding it, I came up with the idea of linked data for numismatics um, and uh, a proto-numisma. But unfortunately, I don't know if it's Steve Stead or Martin Durr who reviewed the application. No one had ever told us about Psydox CRM. So that was that. That was the end of that one. Um, then I met up with Carsten Toller, who will be known to some people um, who does, who's basically my IT partner. And he started working with my, well, with several coin find databases and started to produce an ontology, which has a remarkable similarity to the present Numisma ontology. After all, it's the same person who did it. But we're work both projects are working very closely with the material, with the demands of numismatists. And this is really why um, the way numism has gone. Then there was a happy wedding in 2011, New York meets Frankfurt in the basement of the British Museum. And this is basically how the present community came together. Um, important point, numisma is com community driven. It's a smallish but growing committed community. There is no central funding except for the programmer. Um, the wonderful Ethan Gruber uh, is funded through the American Numism Numismatic Society, which also hosts numisma.org. And this actually is quite an advantage. We're criticized often for not applying for funding, but it means we don't have the drop off after three, five years. Someone who was central to the project then moves on to do something else and we have a whole. This is possibly one of our strengths. Um, so very briefly, what is numism and how does it work? As I say, it's a controlled vocabulary of numismatic concepts with URIs, for example, here. You type in this web address, you will find out what a denarius is, a Roman denarius. And we've got things, you know, emperors, we've got mints, we've got strange things people do with coins, nicked, notched and pecked, for example. Um, so the vocabulary covers the terms that we use as numismatists to describe coins. But we also have an RDF ontology with classes and properties, again, which reflect very much um, numismatic terms. For example, is, is it coming up here? Yeah. Has obverse. What is on the obverse? The head side of a coin or has peculiarity down here. It might be nicked, notched or pecked. So again, the ontology reflects how we talk about coins. So I can then start producing 
Oh, this is an old version. It's, oh no, no, it's come up right. The colour's come up right. Um, for those who can see colour, as I've just realised. Um, next time it'll be bold face. So I can say that this coin, which is online in the collection of the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, has the denomination denarius. It was produced by Augustus at the mint of Colonia Patrizia in Spain. It has a start date and end date, which are identical of 18 BC. And I can attribute it through type series item to Roman Imperial Coinage, Volume 1, Second Edition, Augustus 100. So it's a very, very simple RDF that even I can understand and for a computer is very understandable. So as I said, it's a very much bottoms up, user, um, user friendly um, approach. Um, and uh, it gives us a chance to leverage and access a great deal of um, data. For example, portals like online of the Roman online coins of the Roman Empire, we're piling in um, converting databases into numismic conform IDF. They're being uploaded to the server in New York, and then you can query them through the portal. Um, we had a, quest, a, a topic earlier on about um, image rights, copyright. The, the images are being taken on the fly off the the um, the, the source. So. We have the link to the British Museum um, images where the link isn't broken, um, and the images are being brought up on the fly to um, the portal. That way we get around um, licensing uh, problems. These portals are, um, a lot of these portals are driven by the software NumiShare, programmed by Ethan Gruber, which was set up to do basically um, ancient coinage, Roman coinage, we're now starting to move on, and this is something I'll come down to. We're moving into the medieval period. Oscar does Swiss medieval coinage. We'll come to some of the difficulties there. What is a real challenge and one that I'm facing now is Iron Age Celtic coinage, the Celtic coin index, which consists of a wall of index cards about half the size of this wall here, has now been put online. We're then starting to get geospatial data, find spots, as well as typology. That's slowly coming together. Um, but perhaps the biggest, um, um, the biggest Numismacorn project is the uh, Coin Hoards of the Roman Empire project run for 30 years by privately funded by the Augustus Foundation and at present has nearly 6 million coins in. Um, so we're actually starting to talk about um, genuine big data um, here. Uh, we have a Sparkle endpoint as well, which hosts all the data hosted in New York. And again, I have to come back to a few of the, um, the, the misconceptions. Um, people just do not understand. Well, there, there's a real problem. You put digital stuff out there and people think this is wonderful, clean data, but they don't know what the data is about. So they're starting to use it in ways which are just quite simply not correct. The paper that talked about the Numisma database was actually talking about the New York Sparkle Endpoint, which actually has the online coins Roman Empire, which is nothing more than a digital representation of a series of volumes which are 99 years old. And there is a feeling because it's digital, this is something really reliable and you don't need to actually ask what it's all about. This is really one of the big lessons that I'm starting to learn about what's coming back. And, and I have to say, we're not very good at explaining ourselves in Nomisma. I have, we have to admit, we have not done enough um, work getting out, putting um, the message to um, the public. Uh, we're getting better. We now have a, a, a blog on the, the hypotheses group. There's a Nomisma hypothesis blog, and this includes the Nomisma cookbook, where we can show you how we suggest you use the, the ontology for modeling. So examples of how you can use the classes and properties um, for modeling numismatic data. <clears throat> but moving on to the challenges we face, and I talked about a couple of other websites, that, the medieval and the Celtic uh, websites. Um, We've started with Iron Age coinage, uh, with Roman coinage, moved on to Greek, and it's very nicely structured because you have physical mints and you have actual rulers. And this top coin is quite easy 
Iron Age coin of uh, Kundabalinos, Shakespeare's Cymbeline. It says here, it, was, it says Camu, so you can assume it's produced in Camilodunum, and it actually says Kuno here, so you know it's Kundabalinos. So you can actually put this into, which you see on the right, into the structure of the Roman, the Greek coinage. That's not a problem. But the bottom coin is one of these very early Celtic imitations of the status of Philip of Macedon, father of Alexander the Great. These are quite rare coins, and basically all of them are pretty well unique. So we don't know who's producing them. We don't know where they're being produced. We just have isolated examples, which might be quite uh, a long way apart. And as for dates, um, there are one or two from burials which give us some sort of archaeological context, but we are relying on the date of the original um, and basically old 19th century Darwinian um, ideas of evolution um, for how the, the worse it is, well, the further it is from the original, the later it is. We have basically no other tools to go with this. So what we are now, what I'm facing as, as being in charge of the Iron Age group is how we can start thinking about modeling this sort of very, very disparate material. I'm very, very keen um, to talk to people who are facing challenges, um, uh, similar challenges like this. I mean, how do you model handmade pottery, for example? Um, this is the sort of thing that would interest us um, greatly. Um, then you come to the Middle Ages, and we have very different challenges. Again, we have very nice structure, but here the guy who launched the, well, he didn't actually launch the Spanish Armada, but sent the Spanish Armada across, is Philip II. But no, he isn't. He's Philip I of Portugal. But no, he's Philip I of Naples and Sicily. And he then has a, a series of other, I mean, he was in theory King of England as well. Um, so this is well, this isn't particularly difficult. These multiple names are not particularly difficult. There are thesauri that will cope with this, but it's going to get for us very difficult when, when we come to things like Tala, which is today's dollar. I mean, there are, there are thousands of different Talas. There are lots of dollars in the world today as well. So how are we going to how are we going to create a vocabulary that reflects the similarities and differences in this? And how are we going to model this? So that moves into a very very different um, area, a very different kind of kinds of problems that we have. Um, numismatists, everyone knows, numismatist sits in ivory towers and stroke their pressures, very golem-like. Um, some of us actually, well, I, I was originally an ancient historian, but I'm more of an archaeologist. Um, but there is a large community of numismatists who are very, in, very archaeologically oriented. And numisma has always been seen as, we've always been looking to link up to other things. 2016, we presented this um, paper at the CAA. Um, about the, the numismatic island, and numisma is linked in to Wikidata and geonames and also the resources bottom left there of the of German Archaeological Institute, where I'm from. So we're, we're very keen on ensuring that our, our um, certainly our vocabulary is linked in well to other resources. And we're now starting to move on in the direction of archaeology. There is this very interesting... Um, uh, set up program Dedalo, which is produced by um, a company in Valencia. This is a very large community. As you can see, they've just celebrated 25 years of development. And for the last six or seven years, Numismatics has been involved in this. And, um, and here we're looking, go, moving into the area of archaeological finds. Uh, this particular numismatic, numismatic Sardinia does Peter van Dommelen's data, but they're looking at ways of now in integrating excavation plans and exactly where the coin is in the excavation into this website, which, and I will be entering the coins from Steve Ellis's um, excavation in Taros into this um, system. Um, we were also involved in the Ariadne project. Unfortunately, I was a data contributor and um, so we had very li limited time to do the modeling, but we started to model Ariadne, um, uh, the, well, Numisma to basically the Ariadne model. There's a lot more work to be done there. And um, 
I would love to replace the Getty thesaurus. I, if you Google, if you look at my orchids, you will find the article. I would love to replace the Getty thesaurus with the Namisma uh, vocabulary because there are um, big problems there. Um, so we're trying, to, we're trying to link in as much as we can to the archaeological domain. You can find more about us um, here um, on the Numisma Hypothesis blog, which is also, we also have a Daria EU digital numismatics group, which is nice, which gives us a kind of handle. So please go and look at that and see what's happening. Um, and finally, something I should really have said at the beginning, one of the reasons I came over to talk, talk about this is this misunderstanding of Numisma. I mean, we have huge import input, the Portable Antiquities Scheme has all their data in Numisma to conform RDF, coin hoards of the Rio Empire as well. In the numismatic community, Numisma, it's what everyone is using. And we were, I have to admit, rather disappointed when CIFA produced their guidelines on recording Roman coins, that in spite of feedback from someone working with Numisma, they didn't incorporate Numisma into it. The irony is that it was having a, the third beer in a pub in Bristol with the author of those guidelines that I came up with the idea of linked open data in 2006. Um, so we, um, but I'm very pleased to say that English Heritage have been in touch with us and they are going to be um, making sure that their um, numismatic data is uh, numisma conform. So uh, I would encourage everyone to, if you have coins, please use numisma, look at it, but I will also, for people developing ontologies and vocabularies, um, it's been a long journey. We've learned a lot about how to do it. Um, as I say, we're community driven, bottom up, in contrast to Psydoc. Um, Carsten Toller, who's wrote the ontology, always says, like, we're the ground floor. Um, some people would regard us as the basement, but we're, we're at the bottom, basically one of the rooms at the bottom, but we're looking uh, to link up. So. Thank you very much for, for those of you who've remained to listen, and I look forward to uh, any, uh, any comments and ideas. Thank you.